Hey, this is Bill, and I've got a nice basic English video for you here today. Now, I'm going to talk to you about silent E. Now, a silent letter is a letter in a word that we don't say. It's just there. We write the word, we write the letter, but when we read the word, we don't say that letter. Now, silent E, kind of a tricky one here. And I've got some examples to help you. Now, if you can remember your vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Now, now each vowel has two different sounds, the short sound and the long sound. Well, silent E is the letter E that comes at the end of a word, but we don't say the E. The E is just there to change the vowel sound. Let's take a look here and I'll show you. All right. Now, I have this first word here, plan. Okay. That's like, I have a plan for tomorrow. Okay. So we know that a plan, you make a plan. Then if I do this, now it's not plan E. No. Now it becomes, before it was short A, plan. Now long A, plane. Okay, like an airplane. All right, look at the plane in the sky. Not plany. Now it's long a plane. Okay, next thing going down here. We know this. This is a man's name, Tim. Maybe you have a friend named Tim. Okay, but and again, the i sound that's short i. I. But if we go ahead and if we put silent e there, that means now time. Okay, what time is it? All right, not Timmy. Again, silent E. Don't say it, but now you have the long I sound. Time. All right, if you remember, plan had the A eh with short A, so does cap with the A eh, eh sound. All right, so if we have cap, Right now, let's go ahead and make cape. All right, now we go to long A with the cape sound. All right, keep it going here. Hop, that's short vowel O, the ah sound. All right, so we have hop. I just did one. All right, now after hop, we put short E. Don't say hoppy. We say hope. It's like, I hope it does not rain tomorrow because I'm going to the baseball game. Things like that. All right. Before it was hop. Now hope with the long vowel O sound. All right. Coming up here. We haven't done one with U yet. Now, long U, it's a little strange. It's ooh. Okay. But more on that. So here's short U, tub, the uh, uh, short vowel U. All right. From tub, we put silent E. Again, not tubby. We say tube. All right. A tube of toothpaste. Okay. Goes from tub to tube, but still, I'm not saying silent E. All right. After that, we come down to bit. Bit means a small piece, you know. Can I have a bit of your bread? Well, that's bit again. Same as Tim, we have the i, i, short vowel i. So again, silent e comes in. Bite, not bitty. Bite going on there. Now, you're probably getting a good idea of it. So I just got two more for you. Again here, you know, remember, uh, the short vowel U, uh, uh, uh. Well, here is cut. Well, we go cut. Now cute. Okay. We have cute. Ah, look at the cute puppy. All right. And now last one here. I've got rip. When you don't have scissors. All right. Well, there's rip and then there's ripe. 
long vowel I with a silent E. So listen to me as I say these. We've got plain, time, cape, hope, tube, bite, cute, and ripe. Never did I say the E because it's silent. It's just there to make a long vowel. Okay, I hope that was helpful and I hope I see you again soon. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Bill and right now I have a very simple pronunciation video to go through with you. Now, sometimes in English we have silent letters. Now, these are letters that appear in a word but we don't say them when we read that word. So it can be a little difficult when you're trying to listen or read. And I'm just going to explain this one idea to you. And that is K before N at the beginning of a word. Now, you can see all the examples behind me. But of course, in this case, if you see KN at the beginning of a word, you do not say the K sound. Okay, just forget the K's there. Well, don't forget, but ignore it, okay? Don't make that sound. So our first one here, this word is not canal, all right? That's horrible right there. What you want to do is you just want to think no, and you should know this is like, I know how to speak English, all right? These are the things you know how to do. It's not cano, we just know, I know how to do things. All right, and then down to knowledge. All right, again, no K sound. We have knowledge. Now, knowledge is all the things you know. If you have a lot of knowledge, you're a very smart person. All right, stupid people, they have no knowledge. Okay, or maybe you just don't know about a certain topic. It's like, I have no knowledge about the Chinese language. That's a true thing. I don't know anything. All right, next, we have night. Now, this is not nighttime, like, oh, day is finished. It's nighttime. Now, if there's a K here, this is like the old style in England, like King Arthur and his knights, and they wear the armor and fight with swords, that sort of thing. That's what that knight means. We also have this one here, new, okay? Now, new is just the past tense of no. It's okay. Like, many years ago, I knew someone named Paul. All right. That was in the past. I don't know him anymore, but I knew him many years ago. All right. We also have knee. That's a, that one right there. Okay. It's like that middle part of your leg where your leg bends. That's the knee. Again, not knee. Remember that. Now, kneel. Very similar to knee, just plus an L. Now, kneel, it's now sometimes people sit down on a chair, but then kneel just means to go down on your knees, okay? Probably because you don't have a chair. So you have to kneel on the floor, down on your knees, okay? Another one, knife. Very simple. You have to cut something, knife, okay? If you ever cook food or prepare food, you might need a knife to cut your vegetables. So remember, not knife, just knife. After that, another example is knit, okay? You know, if you have a handmade scarf or maybe a handmade sweater, that means you knit the scarf, okay? It's the old style. Making a scarf, you knit the scarf. Handmade style, all right. Then there's knob, all right? Now, knob is on some doors. Some doors have a handle, but some doors have a knob, and this is you grab it and just turn it. It's almost like a ball shape. Grab the knob, turn the knob. It's a good thing. All right, also for a door, you have knock. This is knock, knock. Anybody home? All right, you're going to visit your friend, don't just open the door. Well, maybe, but it's polite. Knock, knock. Then someone will come and open the door for you. Okay. Then we also have not. Okay. Now, this isn't like, I am not 
going home. No, with a K, not is kind of like when you tie something, like your shoes. Okay, you take your shoestrings and you tie them into a knot so that they don't fall down, fall apart. Okay, tie your shoes in a knot. All right, and then down here we have knuckle. All right, knuckle, kind of like how knee is on your leg, a knuckle. Is on your finger. All right, right there, where your fingers bend. Those are my knuckles. All right. So as you can see here, there's many words. There's more than these, but these are just twelve of these words where it starts with K, but we can't say the K. Well, can't we just don't say the K, or it's you're gonna look silly. I hope that helps you, and I hope you can remember it. Thank you. Hi, this is Bill, and I'm here to help you with some pronunciation. Okay. Sometimes in English we have words that have letters we don't pronounce. We call them silent letters. And well, right here I'm going to tell you about how the letter P can sometimes be silent. Now, this happens when the word begins with the letter P, but then it is followed by another consonant. Now, this is when we ignore the letter P and we do not actually pronounce that letter. It is only silent. So let's look right here. What I have in this word, P N begins the word, but I'm not going to say pneumonia. Okay, the P is silent. So all I'm going to say is pneumonia. Okay, and、uh, pneumonia is a sickness that you get in your lungs. That you know. When you're breathing, you can get sick. It's more common in the winter time, and it's kind of serious. So if you do have pneumonia, I hope you're seeing a doctor, getting help for that. But please, the help I can give you is don't say pneumonia. Just say pneumonia. And remember, it's a lung sickness. When you're breathing, it's kind of like all right here. Okay. Now the next one here, it's not psalm. All right. Now this we just say psalm. Now psalm is it's a it's a part of the Bible. And if you read the Bible, if you go to church, there's a part of the Bible that's known as the Psalms, like Psalm one, Psalm two, and、um, it's just you know information from the Bible and things like that. If you go to church, you probably talk about that sort of thing. But what we'll talk about right now is that you should pronounce it psalm. Remember. We have a silent p, so just pronounce the s. Now, actually, for the rest of these, you notice p s is getting very common because as you look at the next one here, psychology. Okay, now psychology is a subject that maybe you or someone you know studies in school. Psychology is all about how people think. It's like the way the mind works, like why we think the way we do. That's the study of psychology. Again, not psychology, just psychology. So that down here on the next one, similar to psychology, we have psychiatrist. Now, psychiatrist is a doctor who is an expert of psychology. Okay, they've studied psychology all through university. They know psychology. They help people who want to talk to someone about how they're thinking. You know, they want to see a doctor about their mind. They see the psychiatrist, and he helps them with emotional problems or things like that. But yes, so a psychiatrist studied psychology. Now, also similar, we have the psychic. Now, the psychic doesn't study psychology. The psychic. Is more of a fortune teller. If you're curious or you want to get an idea about the future, you might visit a psychic, and、uh, maybe they check your hand or they look at cards. But a psychic tries to tell you about your future, and that's what they do. So yeah, a psychic is more of what we say a fortune teller. That's a similar term right there. And then down here at the bottom, you've probably heard this before, is psycho. All right, this is someone whose mind is a little broken. Okay, 
Maybe they do bad things because of it. Many, many scary movies have a psycho character in them who's causing problems for other people. So yeah, we have that, the psycho person. It's kind of maybe even a little crazy here, but okay. So as you notice, PS is very common, but don't say the P, all right? So just one more time, I'm gonna pronounce these for you. So listen up. We start with pneumonia, psalm, psychology, psychiatrist, psychic, and psycho. So, all right, if you ever see these words in something you're reading, just remember there's a silent P when the word begins with P and is followed by a consonant. I hope that helps and I hope you remember it. Have a good day.